Hi, in this video, we are going to talk about JTAGulator, which is one of the really useful devices which can help you identify the JTAG pinouts. Now, this is how JTAGulator looks like. I also happen to have one open over here, and this is how it looks like when it's out of the box. Uh, so one of the things that you can notice in JTAG later, it, it has got a lot of different channels with which you can connect the possible JTAG uh, pins or parts of the target device and then you can identify what this particular pin stands for. So if you look closely over here, you can see that there are a number of channels uh, all the way from channel 0 till channel 24 or 23 for that matter. So there are a total of 24 channels which you can connect to and figure out what this particular pin actually means. Uh, for, the, for example, if this pin is TDI, this is TDO, this is TMS, this is TCK and so on. So this is one of the devices that you should definitely have if you are performing an IoT pen test and if you have to perform JTAG debugging, and in order to perform JTAG debugging, the first step is to identify the JTAG pinouts. Now we are trying to, we are going to try to identify the JTAG pinouts of two different devices. Uh, the first device is this one, which is a uh, board by Texas Instruments. And the second device that we are going to look at is uh, an STM32 mini development board uh, for both of which, for which uh, will identify the JTAG pinouts. So let's move to a, a laptop and connect the JTAG later, make the connections and then uh, figure out what are the pinouts. For ST now to make the connections, uh, what you need to do is, as I mentioned, there are a number of channels in JTAG later. So if you look over here, there are a couple of uh, channels that you can see, right? So these are different channels uh, starting from channel zero till channel seven. Uh, from channel 8 till ch channel 15 and channel 16 till the channel 23. Now in our case, uh, we'll just take four uh, jumpers, which in this case are female to female jumpers. And what we'll do is we'll simply connect uh, the four possible JTAG pins on this particular device, which is the one by Texas Instruments to the four channels over here, also connecting the ground to ground and then uh, connecting these to the system. The same goes 32. Uh, so in this case, we know that there are uh, four possible JTAG pinouts, uh, I, I guess A15, B3, CLK and IO. So let's go ahead and make the connections. So this is where uh, CLK and IO are, over here. And also connect these two channels over here. So first goes to channel zero, and then goes to channel one. And as you can imagine, uh, the uh, order that's not because that's what we're going to identify. And then this particular pin stands for what in the back. Next we connect uh, the A15 and B3. So A15 is right over here. I'm not sure how uh, this will be, but uh, these are the A15 and B3. And first one connects to channel two. Also make sure not to connect the BDJ. Uh, I need two more jumpers. The next one goes to B3, which is over here. And this goes to channel three. And finally, the last one is ground. So this is ground. And this goes to ground over here. So this is all the connections that uh, needs to be made. Now let's jump to the laptop and uh, connect this one with a mini USB cable and also connect the STM32 with a micro cable and plug both of these to your system. So the JTAG later needs to be connected to the system and the STM32 just needs to be powered on so it does not matter whether you power it on through an external source or another laptop or the same laptop. So now we have uh, the JTAGulator plugged into our system as well as uh, we have the STM32 development board powered on. So if you do a ls slash dev slash tty uh, dot usb serial in this case uh, in case you're on Linux, uh, it would be something like slash dev slash TTY USB zero. And once you have the device connected to your host system or the virtual machine, you can simply do a pseudo screen uh, followed by this device ID over here, followed by the baud rate, which in this case is 115200 uh, right over here. So as you can see, we have the JTAGulator prompt now. 
if we hit H, uh, we see the entire JTAG options. Uh, so we have options such as to identify JTAG pinout using both uh, ID code scan and bypass scan. Also getting the device IDs. Uh, it can also work as a UART pass through if you're working with a device which has the UART pinouts. Uh, you can set the target voltage uh, and so on and so forth. So let's first of all go ahead and set the target voltage, which in this case is 3.3. And uh, let's use the bypass scan to identify the JTAG pinouts. So the first thing as soon as you do a B to uh, perform the bypass scan is that it will ask you the number of channels to use. And this simply means the number of uh, different channels that you have used on JTAG later. So in our case, we just have used uh, we have just used four different channels. So I'll just put four. And if you hit the space bar, it will start scanning or start trying to identify all the different JTAG pinouts. We hit a space bar. And as you can see, it has identified that the pin two is TDI, pin three is TDO, uh, pin zero is the clock, and pin one is the mode select. Uh, you can also try to uh, get the device IDs if it is possible in the current situation and uh, let's give it the pin IDs which you have just identified earlier so TDO is 3, TCK is 0, TMS is 1 and uh, number of devices in the JTAG chain is 2 and as you can see uh, it has identified both the different device IDs uh, the manufacturer ID is the part number and the version number. We can also try to do the same with the other board which was the one by Texas Instruments. So let's make sure our uh, JTAG later is connected. So let's do a ls slash dev slash tty dot usb serial and we have a device connected over here which is JTAG later and we'll do a pseudo screen the device id and then the baud rate which is 115200 and now we have the jtagulator prompt uh, let's set the target voltage 3.3 .3, uh, and let's uh, start the bypass scan and the same number of channels 4 spacebar and you can see that it has identified it again so that is all for this short video. Uh, in the upcoming videos of the JTAG exploitation kit or the IoT exploitation kit, we'll see how we can actually take all of this information and perform JTAG debugging and bypass authentication uh, through like manipulating the registers while the process is running all through JTAG debugging. So thanks a lot for watching the video.